Hello everybody, Straight Jacket Jim here with another Nuts and Bolts interview. This time talking to Kanga lead coach Calvin. How are you doing, Calvin? Hey Jim, I'm doing completely fine and well. Yeah, it's great great to hear. Like, Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us today. I know you must be busy heading into the, the second week of playoffs in the LCO there, but I do want to ask you, how does it feel making the playoffs? Like, You must be so pumped that the team was able to get in there. Oh, it definitely felt great, especially going into split two, right? And almost no one expected us to reach top five and let alone like winning the round one of playoffs. So yeah, so we're, we're currently prepping for the round two against Pentanet. Uh, and I think the roster's performance this split has definitely surprised a lot of people. And while the team is sort of happy with the progress so far, I think our goal is still to play a dream hack. I think that's that's everyone's goal. And, and that's... That's it, because you don't want to be just making up numbers in in the uh, in the playoffs. There, it, it being able to go go deep into the season, get that even that third place playoff a dream hack. That would be amazing, and getting that land experience, which I feel is invaluable. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, dream hack is a like, playing at land is something that you don't really get in Australia, mm-hmm. and especially with like COVID and stuff, right? Like everything has sort of shut down for the past two, three years. So like, you know, having the opportunity to play at LAN is, is a very huge like, motivation for the players. Yeah, and we don't really have the venues. Like we've got Fortress Melbourne and Fortress Sydney that will be coming up. But even DreamHack is like in the in the sports centre because um, sort of around where the MCG and Rod Labor Arena is for, for those that know Melbourne. Um, so yeah, like this, this opportunity doesn't come up very often in OCE and, and, uh, whoever gets it will be just amazing. Um, you did mention early, uh, just in earlier in that question about, um, not being expected to, to make the playoffs, which I think is a, a fair point because most people, including most of the Carter desk were expecting the big five in LCO to make it. So that's your, your chiefs, your pentanet, your order, die wolves and peace, um, but I tell you what, I was so excited to see you guys make it. Like it is, it it shakes it up. It it makes the competition more interesting. And I remember back in split one, um, I'm not sure if it was you or if it was an, another another person had an interview with the the LCO uh, casting desk there, and there was a little bit of talk about um, how you were progressing at the time. Which at at the time it was your first split in a, in. A, in LCO, so it was to be expected, but you weren't going super well. Um, but they mentioned that you were building, and really, you can see how that's coming along now. But how how do you personally feel the roster's progressing, and and really, how much better can it get? Yeah, I think this one is a little interesting. So I wasn't part of Kanga's coaching roster in Split mm-hmm. One, so I can't give you an answer from their perspective. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, they definitely have a different approach, but for split two, right? I can say that I took a completely different approach where my goal is more to win than to develop. And I've made it very clear to the players as well. So on the first day uh, of me joining Kanga, I called a meeting where, I mean, it might sound wild to everyone and maybe even the Kanga players at the time. Um, because what I said on the, I said something on the line of, I'm not joining the team to make it look mediocre or you know, to get an expected result. Because I told them that like, okay, I've watched your scrims and I feel like we've got the potential. So I'm joining the team if, and only if I can see the team making top three by the end of the split. So with that said though, Kanga isn't there yet. Okay, we're still, you know, one series away from from making that top three, but I think the current roster is progressing very well um, in terms of meeting the goal. And in terms of how much better the team can get, uh, well, I won't say I can. We can beat the Chiefs at DreamHack Grand can, Finals, can, but can anybody on a good at this day. point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but on a good day, I can definitely mm. see us, you know, putting them a close fight and take some games off them. That's awesome. Yeah, and and like I said, I've been really excited. Like I, um, I had some some connection to Pentanet. Our um, the head of game on Oz used to be PGG's general manager for a bit. Yep. So yep. like that's generally Pete. the team I follow. Yeah, Pete. Um, uh, but I am just, like I said, I'm, I I love an, a bit of an underdog story, and I love that it's shake, shaken up the format. Like, um, it it's just it puts that bit of unpredictability in into the league and makes it more exciting. And and really, 
I, I cannot wait to see how you guys go, not just in this this split, but future splits as well. Um, you mentioned a little bit about how like you were talking to the player and you can see the um, the ability and the potential in the lineup that you've got there. Uh, how how was it when you came into the lineup and you've got Liv there who, who managed to get over to Worlds as a fill-in for Peace in uh, 2021? Has, was he... Like, do do you go to him a lot for some experience, or or have you got him doing some other other stuff for to fit in with your gameplay plans? Well, Tristan is more of like a quiet player, actually. Mm. So like, he's very energetic. He's very uh, he's very easy to work with. But I think you know he he probably would have had a lot of cool experience at Worlds twenty twenty one as well with Peas. Uh, but I think that didn't really contribute a lot to his sort of like knowledge or gameplay but instead i like i think most of his success comes from him having like that natural talent and really good work ethic uh more than anything else right like this split right um you guys can probably see that tristan has had some games where you know he's looked a little shaky but towards the end right he's definitely stepped up a lot and because like i'm just gonna give everyone a little bit of behind the scenes thing the man have to wake up like i think four in the morning oh uh to work Ouch. yeah so like you know just just imagine that the the, the man have to play at night yeah you know, for a competition right it, it's and based it's, eastern states as well so like this and then playing in the lco is being up stupid late at night if you get a late game that's crazy yeah so it's it's completely crazy right like you know, especially when it comes to playoffs, right? Like games can go as late as something like, I don't know, 11 p.m., something like that. Mm-hmm. And just, just the thing that, you know, Tristan sometimes have to wake up just a few hours later to work is, is pretty insane. Mm. That's, some, that's some great dedication from him. And not just that he's, he's doing it, but that he's probably been doing it for a long time as well. Like, that, that's, that's incredible. That's just really, like, I respected him before, but the respect is now, like, further up here yep. now. yeah okay. that's like as someone that gets up at six o'clock for, to work myself i can't imagine getting up at four o'clock to do something like that that that's amazing um but with your success in in split two here uh so just so folks at home though compared to split one split one you won six games split two you've won 10 games um are there any games that sort of stand out to you where you've gone, yep, yeah, this is awesome. We are doing really well because uh, you won the you won the head to head against Die Wolves two to one, and you mm-hmm. you beat Peace three times as well. So that's that that's just amazing in itself. But yeah, I just wanted to know from your perspective, is there any any games that stand out just from the regular split? Yeah, I think as a coach, right, I don't look at the victories as often, but instead I study our, defe- uh, our defeats. So, like, I didn't really feel much when we got the head-to-head against, you know, Peas and Dire Wolves. It just means that we 100%, you know, okay, guys, I think we're making playoffs. Like, it's fairly certain at this point. Uh, but, yeah, instead, right, towards the end of the split, I always think about, you know, especially that final week where, you know, what if Lemus didn't have 3,000 ping when we played against Order? <laughs> I mean, he made, a t- uh, he made a tweet about it, right? Like, yeah. it, was, it was kind of ridiculous, you know, seeing that 3,000 ping mm-hmm. uh, just in the corner of your, of your screen. And then... Um, and, and then, you know, what if we won the Elder fight uh, against the Cheese and just close out the game afterwards, mm. right? I think either way, the close defeats against the top teams are the games that stand stand out the most to me uh, because they showcase Kanga's potential the most. That's it. And that's why I feel... I almost feel there needs to be, like, some other measure in the LCO, like soccer uh, has goal difference, AFL has percentages and stuff like that because seeing that that you lost to Chiefs is one thing because, like, they had the perfect split. Like, you can't really yeah. say much more about that. But showing how close you came, it that that to me, like, I think you were one of the te- closest teams that that came to beating Chiefs this season. Yeah, split. I mean, we we had two games. We had two games that you know we almost took down the Chiefs. One is the the final week round mm. three where we got to the elder fight. Basically, whichever team won that fight is just going to win the game. Mm. So it was just a little bit of execution thing. And then in round two, we I think we got to a point where if we took Baron, our momentum would be good enough to just close out the game. But then again, we also just lost that one fight, and then the tides sort of just turned. So yeah, yeah I mean, we are definitely one of the teams that you know 
got really close to beating the cheese and stopping their um their perfect split. Uh, but yeah, I mean, props to cheese, right? They they're definitely looking insanely strong. Oh uh, yeah, split. Yep. Um, but you mentioned the uh, the Baron a couple of times there, like so. Moving to talk a little bit about your game against Direwolves and the Playwolves. How the hell did Ben V get that Baron steal? Like that that was ridiculous. Guess what? Was it like an auto attack or something? It's, it's... No, it's it's um you know this is probably better off asking the Direwolves yeah. because honestly I don't know either. Yeah. I think just like just like what Rusty said, right? Mm. On the broadcast, a steal like this is something that can happen and it's in the back of everyone's mind but no one like no one would expect it yeah right it's just so it's just it just seems so impossible right like mm. why would a, a 100 damage spell somehow take baron right now surely that's not gonna happen but no i mean ben is just insane <laughs> so yeah props to him for stealing at baron because that also gave us the momentum to come back into the game because we're slightly behind yeah i think at that point and we just eventually closed out game one and it was just you know easy cruise mm -hmm. And it wasn't so much that you uh, that you were able to use the Baron, because I think there was only two of your members alive at that point, but denying Direwolves yeah. that Baron buff, that was just impressive. And yeah, Direwolves weren't expecting it as well. There was nobody sort of trying to zone off <laughs> Benvy. And and yeah, like you go on to win that 3-1, which, which is good because I, I feel like games in the LCO for playoffs are either 3-0 or 3-2. You very rarely see a 3-1. Oh yeah, we broke the curse. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we broke I think we broke two curses this split in LCO. So one is uh, during the regular season where uh, the cast of predictions. Yeah. So like whenever there is like a three to one cast of predictions, mm -hmm. uh, then that one person is always going to win. I think we broke that one unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think it was Mac. I think it was Mac. Mm -hmm. So like sorry Mac, you know we we, we sort of uh, we, we let you down a little bit mm -hmm. there. But yeah. at the same time, yes, we also broke the three-one curse. So mm. I think we are the only team that had a three-one. This, I mean, not even this split, but also last uh, last year as well, right? Mm. Yeah, because I think like split split one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was either. It was, three... it was very one sided. Yeah, yeah, it was it very was... one sided, and there was like a couple of three two games. Yeah, except the I think the only the three two games were the PGG Chiefs won in the first or second round, and the final between Order and Chiefs as well. I think that went three two as well. But, yes, um, yes. but yeah, no, it's crazy. And, and like I said, I'm glad to see you guys are having, having this success. Um, but really now the focus for you is going to be switching to week two of the playoffs against PGG. What's the vibe like in, in the team? Because like, this, this has got to be a, a very important game against a tough, important, uh, tough, important, tough opponent <laughs> when my tongue starts working again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone's looking forward to the series. And I mean, no doubt, like, PGG is a very difficult team to fight against. And we know that we're not the favorites heading in. I mean, you know, you can see it from, you know, the cast, what Casa says, or like the cast's prediction, you know, on, on the LCO Twitter, etc. But we're definitely keen to prove everyone wrong and give them a banger series that propels us into DreamHack because, you know, this is our goal. Yep. And that's amazing. I cannot wait to, to see it happen. Uh, Monday and Tuesday nights, LCO week two playoffs there. Check it out. Um, actually, by the time by the time this interview airs, it's actually just going to be air next Thursday. So <laughs> so the gate will know will know what's what's going on, who's heading to DreamHack. But look, all the best of luck to you. I cannot wait to see Kanga face off against PGG and, and hopefully you guys can go go the distance. Thank you so much, Calvin, for talking with us. Now, some some astute viewers among you may have noticed that we were talking about the games like they were happening in the future. And that was because we recorded that last Saturday. So, yes, the, there was a, um, so, some, some stuff that we'll talk about later that happened uh, on Tuesday night. Kanga did play Pentanet, and of course Chiefs played Order, but we, we'll get to that in a sec, because, you know, we've, we, there's an order of things, and I already feel like I've skipped ahead a little bit too much here, because I haven't said hello to Natty yet. How are you, oh, Natty? I'm good. I'm, I'm glad we get the introduction in early enough. I, I do mm. listen to some podcasts where it's like 45 minutes in, and they still yeah. haven't introduced each other. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, but, uh, but it's been fun, like, this... Heading into playoffs for League of Legends, um, Oceania Circuit or LCO, as you know, people actually paying attention to the league will call it instead of me giving its full name. Um, it's it's been entertaining. Like, um, although I still think 
like Chiefs are definitely the team to beat. Like watching them play order on on Monday night, it was just it was a three zero, and Chiefs just never looked like losing. Yeah, I, I was kind of looking to to watch that match just to see if they were going to give any hints away of having any weak spots, but I didn't get a chance to watch it. But it sounds like it was um, yeah, relatively straightforward games. Yeah, didn't give much away. I do wonder a bit how all the the palaver around order as an organization at the moment might have affected the team. Um, I, I like it. You you got to think this the news that big. It's always got to be in the back of your mind. And and full credit to them if they were able to shut that out. But like it's it's got to be hard for order as a team. Oh, a billion percent. You know, going in real time, they heard about that news last week on Tuesday? Yeah, I think, I think they, yeah, they got to play their game against Pentanet on Monday and then found out on Tuesday that Order had gone into voluntary administration. Yeah, which, yeah, absolutely would be weighing on you. I don't think that it, you'd be able to avoid that, but it's good. They still, like, rocked up, you know. <laughs> They're still playing through their season, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the, the other game, which was on Tuesday night, was PGG versus Kanga. Um I think the best way to describe that game was interesting. It was, <laughs> it was uh, very interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, look, f- full credit to Kanga. They 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 tried their hardest. Um, and, in fact, they seemed to play better on red side. Like, the, the game that PGG got to play on blue side, they just dominated. Uh, but the, the, the Kanga's red side just seemed to be better for them like it pushed the, the first game was 40 minutes and it was very close kanga got into a um i think they got into the base i think they got onto a nexus turret um so they were doing really well and but pgg just showed their class in that first game but then it kind of felt like pgg were just doing silly things to me i don't know we were watching it in our in our disc game on Oz discord uh with mercury cast who's a part of our community but also does league of legends casting and it was just i don't know some of the team fights that pgg took and the re-engages just felt like they should have just disengaged and and played and i don't know how much of that is because pgg's play style is very go hard or go home like they're, they're in for the early game and their scaling game isn't as good as some other teams. So I just, I wonder how much was them just trying to end it quick? I mean, and the, I mean, we can't complain too much. They still got a 3-0 win as well, but yeah, it just felt like they could have done better. Yeah, it, it, they certainly weren't clean wins and um, it, even experts, not, not non-experts like us were picking up a few team fights where we were questioning whether it was the right time to engage, mm-hmm. especially there was a repeat um, top lane um Oh my god! Thing Under the happened. turret, oh. yeah, where two of the PGG players <coughs> went top and and lost that battle was, both times. And, was it, and you... Yeah, Balkan and Winter are trying to dive onto Lived, and like. Both of them just dying under the turret and Liv just going, yep, cool, I'll take that double kill. Twice! Twice! In the same game! Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think PGG, you know, hopefully between now and um, their game on, because they're playing Friday at DreamHack. They are, they are. So we have our DreamHack teams decided now. So Friday on this the 2nd of September, we will see uh, Pentanet and Auto go head-to-head for the chance to meet the Chiefs who are playing in the grand final on Sunday already at DreamHack in Melbourne. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. Oh, I know. We're, we're both very jealous of Mercury because he's getting mm. getting to head down there every day I wake up and I'm like, do I just book flights? Yeah. Do I just go? Maybe I just go for the Sunday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there. Like, like I, I'm part-time at my day job and I'm sitting there going, oh, maybe I could just yeah take switch my days off to Friday and Monday and I head over and just like, oh, no. <laughs> it's just the money's a bit too much, like especially from Perth to Melbourne at the moment. It's uh, it's quite expensive, shall we say. Yeah. Um, whether, whether me, I could do a midnight run. I could, mm. you know, do the eight-hour eight hour <laughs> drive yeah. to, to, to um, Melbourne overnight and then mm. just, uh, you know, stay awake all day and, mm. and rock it. Yep, and you know what? What it's all <laughs> no about get, getting getting that win at DreamHack and getting the the chance to go to Worlds. But there's also the trophy, and they've shown it off on the LCO 
Um, I'll get the word soon. Twitter? That's the one. That's exactly the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, I don't know why I had a mental blank there. But, no, that's um, all right. <laughs> the, 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 the LCO trophy right there, that looks pretty cool, man. I, I, like the, I like the look of that. It's very league. Yeah, uh, look, I love the color scheme. To be honest, mm. the 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 blue and the yellow is is my my jam. Um, mm. um, a very uh, Dragon Ball Z esque Power Ranger kind of esque. Mm. I, I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that it's not just a cup. Like so many trophies you get are just like the standard bronze looking cup. So it's something different. It's something unique. And yeah, cannot wait to see which team is going to lift that. But let's face it, it's going to be Chiefs. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we're hoping it is. And there's there's nothing else that interrupts their amazing run that they've yeah. been having this. Week. And and look, here's 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 the thing. I am a Pentanet fan. I will follow them. Um, and I do this in any sport, but I'm not blind to how they play, um, and not blind to their opponents. And if and as an OCE fan as well, I want our best representatives to go to Worlds and have the best chance to do as well as they can. And at the moment, it's Chiefs. Like, hands down, it's Chiefs. They have not dropped a game in Split 2. Like, both their... Oh, actually, no, they've, sorry, they've only had the one um, the one match in finals, but it was a 3-0 against Order, and that's our second-place team. So, mm -hmm. like, this, this is... It's, I don't want to say it, but it's Chiefs to lose. Like... This this really should be their win. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, and and I think we're all wanting them to be yeah. our representative. They will be the best team for yeah. it. And honestly, I'm I am the most excited I think I've been for Worlds since I don't know, maybe ever, mm. maybe ever. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll, <laughs> like I'll I'm get on Feeling that. so actually, much more confident. Actually, yeah. I I do want to. Um, I do want to show something. So just give me a tick while I find it. But there oh. was um, like there were player voted best best team. Hang on. Where is it? And it was put out on a tweet. Um, and I just want to show you the players that were on it. Okay. Expert team. Expert chosen LCO all, all pro team. And I want, want you, Natty, to have a look at that and tell me what you see. Hmm. Yeah, there's something very familiar. Yeah, it, it's it, it's, <laughs> and it's similar between all those. Yeah, players. there's definitely a theme running through there. And for those that are listening on uh, on our podcast platforms, um, they are all Chiefs players. Like there yeah. is <laughs> nobody but Chiefs. Tapoon, top lane, Arthur Jungle, Tally mid, Ray's bottom, Aladoric in the support. Like yeah, this you cannot go past them. They have just been so amazing this season, this split. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll see who gets to play them in the grand final come Friday night, next Friday night, the the second of September. Cannot wait. Yes, it'll be exciting. Yep. But um, more more riot news. So there's been a bit of of movement going on in Valorant uh, circles at the moment. So Riot have been planning because Riot's Riot's only a couple of years old. I think was it 2020 it came out. I'm um, sorry, not Riot. Valorant. 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 Um, I, I was, uh, yeah, so right, right, yeah, Riot's a little bit older than that. Um, but, yeah, so Valorant's only a couple of years old. Came, I'm pretty sure it came out in 2020. 2020, yeah. So, like, they, and they've run a few international events, but now Riot are releasing more information around the structure of that. And I'm I'm for it, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm liking the look of this. So what what's happening, um, I'm going to to flick over so you can see some some graphics as well but um it's a little actually can we zoom in yeah zoom in okay there we go and that's a bit better um so there's going to be sort of three major regions with the americas europe and pacific i'm going to call it europe because ema just doesn't sound as good um but i'm assuming um that, that's like the middle east as well um yeah so uh Os and in those in those regions, you'll have like sort of sub regions, and they'll have their own competition. So it means that Oceania has its own league, um, and there'll be twenty one leagues in total, which which I think it, it's a, it's great. I, I think it's great to see that um, that riots plan plan this out, um, and after the region. So, and you'll have to take this with a grain of salt because 
it's still a little bit um, hard for me to understand. But like the winners from those those sub regions then go into um, a challenger ascension, and then the winners from that go into like a big international league. So it's going to be. It's quite well planned out, and there's even expansion plans. So th- this league will be coming in in 2023, um, and then from 2024 onward, Riot wants to introduce a new team each year up to 2027, which each region will have 14 teams, with, um, which is it's kind of it's it's good. Um, yeah. I, the fact that they're planning so far ahead just has me very excited for Valorant's future. Yeah, I, I'm excited because this is a long runway. So mm. what they were talking about is like a five-year plan. And for any teams getting involved and players getting involved, there's got to be some level of security there, right? Yeah. You know that um, Riot's backing the league for that period of time, not only financially, but also what looks like a really nice kind of grassroots kind of growth system where people can advance through the different um leagues and um make it to the big leagues um Mm. yeah it's there's only one bad thing that i will say about that and it's kind of the regions in and the sub there seems to be a lot of sub regions in the pacific region which makes it kind of hard for for us i think as oceania and and any other asian region uh, team to make it in so for for um just so everybody knows like the americas has four teams in it there's uh, four leagues sorry north america latin america north brazil latin america south um emea has uh, one two three four five six seven seven leagues but asia has was that seven eight yeah ten leagues so and only one of those can get through which I don't know. I feel like with ten leagues, you could have almost have divided that into like Pacific North and Pacific South. Like... Yes, yeah. It's it's always a challenge because you know what factor you go by. Do you go by the amount of player base or you know some other magical number? I, I mean, I'd love it if it was split because it gives us better odds. Um, mm. At the moment, yeah. we're in the same region as India, um, which. Yeah, it's, it's huge well, for us, and, and, like, high-level competition. And and here, here's the thing for me. Like, most of these will probably be playing online tournaments. So, mm. like, for for most of the teams playing internally, cool, that's fine. But if when it comes to the Pacific regions, like, most of the, the players in Oceania are going to be playing on the east coast of Australia. Like that that's just where the player base is. And if you're telling me that one of those teams has to play online against a team from India, man, how big's that ping gonna be? Like it's mm. Yeah, it would be interesting to know that actually. Mm. What the what the uh ping's like from the east coast across the sea like that. Yeah. Like I I know like well the only sort of ping experience I get is um well consistently is playing the old republic mmo the star wars mmo where i play on a east coast america server from western australia and like i'm 300 milliseconds ping that's just what i play on and um so i like it's obviously not that far but it's it's still a reasonable way you'd be picturing like 100 200 milliseconds ping and when you're thinking one fifth of a second that's that's a reasonably big reaction time yeah, yeah, and that it's not something that I think in a competitive um, FPS you you can um, no. run with. So uh, who knows? It, good news is we do have our <coughs> own league, so yeah. Um, yeah, at least we're not having to deal with those kinds of issues locally for our local um, scene. But yeah, when we do start having the Pacific um, Cup events, that's going to be. Mm. It does, yes, a challenge. It does worry me a little bit, um, especially given the history of league in in Oceania and how Riot persisted with a, a league here, but for funding reasons, ended up pull, pulling out because they were losing money on on the league here. And it does worry me a little bit that the same thing might happen with Oceania. And the only way that we can fix that is by getting behind the teams. Um, oh yeah, a hundred percent. 
Yeah. Um, Support the teams. Me, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, for me as a fan, I've got some guarantees that if I don't go and, like, if I go and get a jersey tomorrow, well, you know, in 2023, mm -hmm. that the team's not going to be defunct the following yeah. week because of Riot's lack of support. That's so, it, yeah. Um, I think the fan base has some reassurances with this plan as well, which is good. Um, but, yeah, kind of a, a wait and see, mm. find out what they do. Who knows, maybe COVID disappears and all of, all of the um, important um, cross-region um, uh, events are done in person and, yeah. and Riot's flying everybody around everywhere. Well, that, that's that's another thing that this, this article on VLR.gg um, doesn't mention, and Riot probably hasn't released that information, but, like, the Pacific um, the Pacific Challenger, Challengers Ascension League that, they, that they'll run may be an in-person event. So, mm. like, that, that ping worry may not happen then. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a, a year off. So, well maybe six months off but it's it's still in the future there's still planning going on but uh for the most part what i've seen i'm excited yeah 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 plans are good i don't know if you're anything like me anytime i see a plan i'm automatically reassured even if it's a bad plan it's on paper we can fix it this yeah. looks like a good plan <laughs> yeah no very happy with that yeah something else that i was excited to see and like i didn't know about this natty but like the geek in me just went oh my god oh my i god. need this because like there there's was an XL um XL esports in the fine was it financial modeling world cup and like just the spreadsheet nerd in me just went ooh i like this cuz like <laughs> oh, okay okay you you have to understand the job there was a job i did years and years ago um i first got it and one of the big parts of it it would take half a day of no, no, it would actually, sorry, take more like two days every every month is sending out mobile bills. So we got like a 300-page mobile bill would come in and everything for some reason at that point was done paper-based. So we had to keep a, a, a double-sided copy for us, a double-sided, the original double-sided copy needed to go to the finance area to get paid and we had to do a single-sided photocopy of it that we would send out to the users. And I managed to write a macro in a spreadsheet that just emailed all this out and did it all digitally. Like, and I was just so proud of this this Excel spreadsheet, man. You like, I I I still put it as a highlight of my working career that I made this and like took two days work down to like a couple of hours. It was just ah uh, yeah, you, words cannot describe how proud I was and just seeing Excel being like touted as an, like this got broadcast on espn like yes yeah that's what <laughs> boggled my mind the most right because we always have these debates what's mm -hmm. an esport and sometimes it comes down to you know what game they're playing or what they're doing is speed running an mm -hmm. esport you know we have all these discussions but when i saw this come across and then saw that espn were supporting it i was mm -hmm. like that blows my mind yeah absolutely blows so, my mind where's the speed running on espn come on yeah. Come on, ESPN. So, <laughs> so we're going to show you some of what's going on. So it wasn't. Um, yeah. I'm still wrapping my head a little bit around what was what they were doing, but one part of it was like I think they were like having to, to calculate probabilities and 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 um, like basic things. So a lot they were going in. One was like a slot machine thing. So they had like 19 reels of slots. Um, and yeah, had had to try and work out the probabilities of particular scores and stuff like that. And um, there's a time limit as well. And you can see, like, just oh my god, the, the this guy's using a V lookup table. Like this, this is this is my jam. Like right now, this is my jam. I just oh, it's, oh yeah. Sorry. I, oh. It's beautiful to see. It's, it's absolutely beautiful to see. I'm, I'm tearing up. I'm like Captain Holt watching. Oh, I don't know if you saw the episode of um, Brooklyn Nine Nine where Captain Holt goes to see Moneyball, which was the the baseball oh, statistics so one, and yeah. it's like he's going, "Oh, his use of statistics is so beautiful," and he's got a tear in my eye. That's me right now. Like this, yeah. this XL is. Oh, I love it. Well, one thing I really appreciated that you pointed out as well was the um, 
you know, we're used to headshots in esports and stuff where the players are, you know, pulling poses. They've got the hands on their hips or they're like doing athletic kind of poses. Um, whether for this tournament, they were using what looked like LinkedIn headshots, you know, all very I, serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if I can find, find it because like it would just, oh my God, it just, yeah. Uh, it would just, it made me laugh because like there's one guy in here who looks like the guy off Mad Magazine. Like it, it's just <laughs> him. Like, it, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know if Mad Magazine is still a thing. This may be where he went after Mad. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they, they do look like these pictures have been pulled straight off, uh, off, off their LinkedIn profiles. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it would you know, it's cool. Like we, we talk about it a lot, but mm. um, one thing that's great about esports is that it's naturally inclusive mm. um, um, in, in a lot of ways. And the fact that the genres are expanding um, yeah. and getting lots of notice is just, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just love that there's so much different stuff. It's so cool. Like, and like I said, the, the XL geek in me is just loving it. In fact, I'm going to go, it's like a two hour YouTube video, but I think I'm going to sit there and watch it. Cause I just, I want to know more. I want to know more about this. Yeah. Well, we expect a full report next week. That's it. Um, <laughs> after, after I finish catching up on game com stuff. Oh yes. yes my um, God. But, I wonder uh, if any Oh, I wonder if we're going to get any esports news at Gamescom. I know it's I not know. typical, I'm, but I'm still waiting on because, like, Star Wars Hunters, which looks very much like a a Valorant style shooter where you pick your heroes and and whatnot. Like that has esports potential, and I'm waiting to see that. And being a Star Wars nerd as well, like anything mm. Star Wars, I, I want to know about. But I haven't heard like too much about that for a long time. But um, yeah, that definitely has esports potential. So maybe once I finish watching that, there might be a little bit in there about uh, about Star Wars Hunters. Fingers crossed. Mm. Um, so some other news that happened over the weekend. This is um, this had the potential to be a bit of a mess, and it kind of was a bit of a mess. Um, but the TFT uh, Dragonlands Dragonlands Mid Set Invitational happened over the weekend for OCE. Um, it was, I, I think I might let, let you explain because to start with, Order were, were the broadcast partners of this. So these were, Order were going to, um, to broadcast it, but obviously with them going into voluntary administration, um, it got picked up by a couple of the casters, um, which was good. We still got to see some of it at least, but there were some other issues. Yeah, so um, Jose Potato, who's one of the... Um, the pros that plays in in Australia, he had a couple of the casters on and a couple of other people on his Discord chat, and and was getting the um, POV streams from a couple of the players that were in the tournament. Mm. Um, but Tycoon, who is one of the tournament organisers in the state, we we hit the fourth game, and he noticed that the tournament realm, which is the server they were playing the games on, was a patch behind. Oh no! So oh. they played. So there have been two two days of play. Uh, the final day was already happening. They were four games in out of six for this final. And they were stuck in this position of what do we do? do? Do we have to, you know, scrap the whole thing? Do we have to play the whole weekend again? Do we have to just, you know, redo the final day of play? Do we just, you know, move to live? Um, it was this massive thing that, you know, you wouldn't expect to be happening mm. <laughs> at a Riot eSport um, event. But I think because of the, um, you know, messiness of what's happening with Order at the moment yeah. and then Riot not really... I cannot speak to how much they were supporting this or mm. not, um, but I can say it, it looked like they, they didn't really step up to, to provide a lot of extra um, support. So it, it was a bit of a mess for a while while everybody was trying to work out what they were going to do. Um, so in the end, um, because they had to have the results by the end of that day, they just had to continue, but they swapped to the live server so that they were on the correct patch. Well, that, um, that's good that they were able to play it out. But, yeah, that's... Um... It's unfortunate because it, it and, and you're right, you don't know how much involvement Riot had in it and you all don't know how much they were going to have in it when, when Order were running it and Order just had, had the experience to know 
this is what needs to be done. And it's just one of those unfortunate things where when something pops, you lose that experience and the people mm. that, that know intimately how things work and other people can step in and they can do the best job that they can, but they don't have that experience as, yeah. as much as they know about the game. And, um, but they did get on and we did get some results. Luckily um, there is a bit of a clip we're going to play. So oh, this, this, so this is the pro explaining mm -hmm. exactly what was going on. Cause we were all on his channel watching and he had to explain what was happening. For the next game, we're, we're waiting for a while for the next game to start. The first four games today were played on on Tourney Realm, but the but the Tourney Realm was 12.14b, and the current patch is 12.15. So we're gonna go back to live, which is being played on 12.15, where we'll only have Reunic and Angora's POV rather than Tourney Realm. So we're just gonna watch both of those guys. And hopefully, by some grace of God, they're not on tilt and they're not having the worst time ever in terms of... Oh, God. Yeah, that, it's yeah. it's just unfortunate. Like it, But glad that they got to go on and, and finish it up. So um, we did get three winners. We got Chatsky's Orb... Orbo and Mina, and I apologize, I'm butchering names again, but they are <laughs> representatives going through to the Asian Cup. Um, yeah, I, I say Ubo, but yeah, Ubo, who, who yeah. knows? Um, I keep on I... looking at, like, there's a word called Ouroboros, which is like the snake eating its own tail. And, oh, and like, and yeah. they, it starts like that. So I think I almost want to say Orbo, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Um, what but, um, was really cool about um, those top three players going through specifically is that Orbo um, represented us at Worlds in um, the third set. So oh, nice. it's cool that he's coming back and got that um, international experience as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, Chatsky's Amina jumping in too. Um, it's going to be fantastic that we've got the three mm -hmm. slots instead of two this time for Worlds. Yep. That's amazing because what, what have we got? There's four four five players sorry from from china five from korea uh three from japan and three from oceania which is that's that's great i love it love seeing our representation there and they get to compete for the forty thousand dollar us prize pool with 20 grand going to the winner that's going to be so cool i can't yes. wait yes and, and, and that's, and that's happening, this weekend it's this weekend yeah. yes 26 27th of august get in on that check it out um I do want to check a little bit. I don't know if the winner of this goes somewhere else. Um, I can't oh, see I that information at that moment. Yeah, I'm not um, sure if this is the right one because the heading for it was saying gizmos and gadgets. But the yeah. one we're looking at is Dragonlands. But, um, yeah. But, uh, but, but either way, international yeah. competition, get behind the Oceania players and we cannot wait to see them. Uh so I think we're, we're, we're almost out of, out of time for today, but I do want to want to touch on something just quickly because uh, this came over my Twitter feed um, from Jake Lucky. He, he shared something and it says, normalized parents celebrating their kids' gaming achievements. And he's posted some, some screenshots from Valorant streamer It's Merku, who um, asked, like sort of jokingly asked, asked her mum if she could like have a celebration for for her achievements in Valorant because um, as she explains that basically in this video game I was like a really bad ranking but I'm one game away from hitting a new rank if I win it'll be my biggest achievement in the game like a high score I guess and then the the mum comes back because um, she she says it as a joke and says I wonder if we can have a joke celebration but mum comes back and says why must it be a joke? It can be real if you actually consider it an accomplishment. And then, so do you want a cake or dinner or a lunch? And then, like, it goes on, gets lunch and a cake. And, like, just this mum being so supportive of of her daughter's achievements, even though, like, I, oh, and I can't speak to the mum. She might not understand Valorant. She might understand it. She might not. But just the fact that regardless of of what she knows about the game, she's just happy to celebrate her daughter's achievements. 
Yeah, uh, it's it's beautiful to see, and it's beautiful to see that this player was sharing that as well. Um, I think a lot of us have had moments in our lives where we've had our parents support us in different endeavours, and it, I think it's even more meaningful when they don't really get it, but they're there for you and they're there to support you. Mm. Um, and, and I think this was bringing back a lot of memories for us, um, seeing other players in esports getting supported by their parents, um, mm. which is just awesome to see, especially, you know, it's one of the one of the better sides of Twitter, I think, when you see a mum jump in or a dad jump in and celebrate their, their kids on, on the internet. Yep. And I love it. She, she made it to Platinum One, so she mum, mum bought her lunch. And that's just, that's cool. But I love being around the LCO in particular and seeing some stuff like... You see Pabu's mum, who played for Pentanet.gg in 2021 and is currently in Germany playing for teams there. Pabu's mum is still there supporting Pentanet. Like, you see, yeah. she's she's posting tweets, she, like the cat's PGG Nami and you know, stuff like that. And she you see photos on her Twitter of getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning to watch Pabu play. And even yeah. stuff like um, I made a comment after, like just before um, the PGG order game in the first week of playoffs, like um, Kitty, one of the, the casters, did an um, absolutely amazing roast on Rogue. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten on Twitter and just posted, just got home, sat down to watch it just to see like Kitty kill Rogue in an interview. And, <laughs> and Rogue's mum commented on it. And, and, oh. and, and just see seeing the mums around supporting even better like there was one i think it was skimmy was posting something about juves because juves used to be a caster on the lco last year um but is now a coach in na and he posted something about that and i put i miss juves and juves mum liked it like it's, oh. it's it's just i love seeing the support for parents around around what their kids are doing like even my parents like my parents they they very rarely miss the weekly show that we do on Wednesday nights. I know they try to watch Nuts and Bolts, but they don't quite have... Like, at least with, with the weekly show, it's a bit of fun. and It's a different sort of format, but, like, it's harder for them to understand what's going on in Nuts and Bolts. Um, but they try. They try. They, they, mm. they support me. I am a 38-year-old man, and they come and watch <laughs> me play my hockey every weekend. Like, that's that's like, amazing. It's, <laughs> it, it is. And I, I, think, I think we just got to put some love out there for parents that, that support what their kid's doing, no matter how old they are, no matter what they're doing, if they understand it or not. Mum and, and dads out there, we love you. We do. Mm. We do. And I think that's, that's a good point to finish off the show for. Ooh. Thank you. Hang on, oh, hang on. Do we have anything wrong oh, with tanks this week? We can't do. forget. I, I almost forgot. Oh, Natty, thank you so much for reminding. I, I can't believe I almost forgot this. So, That's okay. It's only because oh. I've actually remembered to do my fantasy league picks this oh, time. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. If, you, know, you, know, you know what? I'm going to do my, my picks live because the ANZ Premier League uh, World of Tanks competition returns this Friday, twitch.tv slash World of Tanks ANZ uh, at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. You can watch the teams battle it out. Um, it's going to be exciting. Like, there's been a couple of returning players uh, in Speed and Bales that are, that are going to uh, do really well for, for their respective teams. And, Natty, you'll be happy that Action X picked up Speed. And I know uh -huh. I'm happy that the Panthers picked up Bales as well. Um, and and seeing that the uh, the comments have come up from the B League as well, it's just going to be super exciting. Um, so let's let's go through now. Um, so I've sorted this by teams because I I wanted to see um, the star ratings for the players and um, the Panthers having picked up ex Brisbane player Madhouse as well. So Panthers have two five star players. They're the only team to have two five star players in their uh, in their roster. So um, going to be exciting. But um, I think I'm definitely going to put Bales in there. And I was having a look earlier. Wymo from the Sentinels is a three-star pick. I think I'm, I'm definitely adding him to my roster. Um, so with, with, the, with the Fantasy League, you've got a... I think you can only have a maximum of two players from a team and a maximum of 18 stars. Um, so let's, let's see. Who else we got? Um, you know what? Uh, let's... let's um, I may have to sort of select someone that's a little bit 
uh, lower down. But I think I, I think Speed would be another good one to have in there because he's quite a good good player as well. Um, and I'm, I'm going to throw some love to Dark Knight from the Comets because he he had a, a pretty stellar season in in the ANZ B League last season. So yeah, I think I've I think got, him... I've got Dark Knight on my reserves mm. if, if if he gets pulled up. Yeah. Um, how many points? I got five points left. But you know what? Let's um. Let's chuck in Madhouse as a five star pick. That, that's my five main roster. So now we've got the reserves. Um, I'm going to pick JT as one of them, um, and all right, and then I'll need, I think pick an, another three star. Uh, let's let's sort by stars. Um, so we've got. Uh, you know what? Let's, I'm going to throw Stifle from the Comets some love as well because he was uh, he he had a, a good season there too. So there we go. That's my my lineup for for the fantasy league for Amazing. ANZPL. Oh, but, I love that. I I have uh, Dark Knight and Madhouse on my bench, mm-hmm. um, and I've got um, Speed and Wymo. So oh, nice. We'll good. see how we go. I've got um, Nay Palmer, Mary Turnip, mm-hmm. and um, of course Donga Lord. Oh, Donga Lord! Yeah. <laughs> I've him in my team. That's it. What a name! Sorry, I do, because of the name. <laughs> I love. Well, I do love because there's there's Donga Lord and um, who plays for the Action X and Doodle Tank who plays for the Sentinels. So, yeah. Like there's some there's some I love I love some of the names we get out there, but uh, <laughs> but that, that's that's uh, the fantasy teams get in there. Uh, there is prizes for for winning it, so definitely get in. Get um, I think there's like HyperX headsets and. And stuff like that so definitely definitely worth it um, I'm just trying to see if I can see no not yet there's um, but yeah over the last couple of seasons they may still be trying to finalizing it but there was like hyper X headsets and keyboards and in-game gold so definitely worth oh, getting amazing. amongst it so um, but yeah now that's the end of the show <laughs> So much fun. Cannot wait to see World of Tanks kick off again this Friday uh, and seeing LCO at DreamHack. As long as, long as the, we, we didn't mention it, but at DreamHack, you'll have the um, the ANZ qualifiers for Halo as well as um, the ESL Challenger Series for CSGO. Definitely worth it if you're in Melbourne. Get down there. All around like the Rod Laver Arena and Margaret Court Arena um, in Melbourne there. So... Cannot wait to see what comes out of that. And good luck to our OCE competitors in the Asian Cup for TFT this weekend as well. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. If you like what you've seen, why not check out this video here? Or if you really like us, drop us a subscribe. And don't forget to like and comment as well. Thanks and we'll see you next time.